Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we've got a quick update by Rob, somewhat related to the war in Ukraine. And in this case, it's about blocking various countries. Now, first of all, Personally, I'm not a huge fan of block lists. They're easily bypassed, in particular uh, country-related block lists. If you are, for example, worried about more target attacks, that's probably not what you want to spend a lot of time on. But on the other hand, they're often easy to implement, and Rob is uh, putting out uh, some scripts and uh, tricks on sort of how to import, for example, the MaxMind uh, country lookup table. And while it may not prevent a lot of attacks, it may, for example, prevent people who are under sanctions from using your services. Personally, at the United Storm Center, uh, we decided to start to restrict uh, some of our resources from access from Russia in particular, starting with our block list. We'll do that uh, sort of on a network by network basis. So trying to avoid any collateral damage here with uh, some incorrect country lookup lists. If you see any problems, uh, please uh, let me know. It should affect uh, later this week also some of our API calls, but the main website should still be accessible for now. Now, EZ has found a second wiper that they called Isaac a wiper that was found in government networks in Ukraine. Now, uh, this wiper followed uh, two other pieces of malware, a hermetic uh, wizard and hermetic wiper that also uh, was described by EZ and others uh, earlier uh, last week. As you're reading uh, the write-ups, and I highly recommend that you do take a look at them, uh, like in this case, uh, the write-up published at uh, welivesecurity.com, take a look not just at the indicators of compromise, like hashes and things like this, but definitely pay attention to how the particular actor got access to the network. In the Isaac uh, white, but it doesn't seem to be all that clear. Uh, but for example, they're suggesting that, uh, first of all, some of the malware was distributed via group policy object. So that means they already had access to some active uh, directory, but also that they use tools like Impacket. So take a look at these tools and uh, make sure that you're able to detect uh, these particular techniques that are being used here. Don't focus too much on specific indicators of compromise like hashes or IP address that may be associated with uh, these particular pieces of malware. And JFrog took a look at PJSIP. That's a library that's being used for voice over IP applications. And they did find five different vulnerabilities, three code execution vulnerabilities, and two denial of service vulnerabilities. Yet again, and sort of hate to say it, but a supply chain issue again, where you probably have no idea what uh, PJSIP is or what software is using it, but apparently it is used in WhatsApp, in blue chains. So some popular voice over IP, uh, voice uh, or video over IP uh, products and likely others as well. Asterisk is also mentioned as one product here by uh, JFrog. So be aware if you see any updates coming uh, down the pipe uh, from for any of your voice over IP products, uh, this may be the reason for it. And Okta released a patch for its advanced server access uh, client. Uh, this one fixes a uh, remote code execution vulnerability with a CVSS score of 8.1, given that this is a quite popular uh, tool and it is uh, providing access control and it is a remote code execution vulnerability. You probably want to expedite uh, this uh, update, even though there is not a really any detail available beyond a very brief summary from Okta. 
And of course, if you want to be resilient, one way uh, to uh, get additional and uh, hard to disrupt bandwidth is a satellite connection. Unless, of course, the satellite network has problems. That's what's currently happening with uh, Viasat. Viasat has a problem with its KA Sat network, and this affects in particular Europe and the Mediterranean. And in these cases, one of the notable outages here was a large number. I've heard a number of 6,000 of different wind power plants that no longer have connectivity because they rely on this particular satellite. Biosat has stated that this may be a cyber attack time-wise since it started on Monday. They suspect somewhat the events in the Ukraine to have a a relationship uh, with that, but uh, really very little information at this point. It sounds like Viasat really doesn't have an idea yet uh, what is causing this. Of course, very difficult uh, to uh, go to a satellite and press the reset button. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.